All right. Um, I thought I'd start a series on uh, uh, photo um, photo diodes and and uh, LEDs, um, otherwise known as emitters and detectors. And there's a whole bunch of uh, electrical devices that operate on the emitter detector idea. Um, Classic uh, fiber optics has an emitter detector. Optocouplers have an emitter detector. Photointerrupters have an emitter, emitter detector. There's a lot of things that have emitter detectors. So um, I thought I'd take a look at those. Um, so we're going to play with some pretty basic devices. Here's a uh, just a regular red LED, and here's a, a silicon photodiode. Uh, let's see if I can show you the show you the package here. It's just a silicon bonded out to a, bonded out to a package. So uh, let's hook these up and see what they do. All right. Uh, let's see if the camera will focus. There we go. Um, so um, I think we've all seen how LEDs are wired up. Uh, we have. Uh, We have a voltage, we have some resistance, we have the LED. Um, usually it's drawn with a couple little arrows coming out showing that it's a, a photo device. Um, and, um, you know, we can put in a 220 ohm resistor or some, something here and, and uh, at plus five, and it draws a certain amount of current. And that lights the LED. Um, well, what are we going to do with the, uh, with the photo? Uh, photo diode. Um, we're going to uh, put it in the circuit reverse biased. We're going to put it in like this. And we're going to put in uh, say a 47k ohm uh, resistor. And so uh, we're going to measure the voltage at this point and um, this could be no voltage flow here unless we start applying uh, light. And when the light comes in, it's going to have a leakage current or a photo current, and it's going to start pulling the uh, pulling the voltage up. And as we put brighter and brighter lights, um, uh, we'll see the voltage go up on the, uh, on the pin here. So let's wire that up. All right, here we have a uh, 1K ohm resistor, and we will put a red LED across that uh, 1K ohm resistor to ground. And so uh, 5 volts comes in, 1K, and ground. And so we have uh, we we'll have light coming out, and uh, over here we have our uh, we have our photodiode. Uh, let's see if I get the polarity right. Uh, let's put it in. Put it in like plus. No, that's the wrong way around. We can put it in like this. Okay. All right. Um, and then we can monitor the uh, uh, the voltage here at the at the uh, resistor. Um, my little breadboard here has a built-in voltmeter, um, so I have it here on the uh, five volt uh, five volt rail, and we'll stick it here. On the um, on the photodiode pulled to ground. So remember, we have plus five photodiode, 47k to ground. So right now it's reading uh, it's reading ground. Um, we bring in a, a, a flashlight and we shine it on the uh, shine it on the photodiode. You can see that our oops, maybe you can't see that. Yes, you can. Uh, we can uh, see that the voltage can go up to the uh, to the rail depending on how much uh, photo current we introduce to the device. Okay, so um, if we have an LED, that's an emitter. We have a photodiode, that's a detector. We can just bend these things. So let's bend our bend our photodiode. Let's bend our LED so they point at each other. Okay, and now we have them. Pretty well pointed at each other, and we have about 0.2 volts. 
And then if we come in with something to block the light, here's a ruler, you can see that it drops to zero. So when I remove the ruler, the voltage goes up. When I put in the ruler, the voltage goes down, right? So that's the way a photo interrupter works. Um, so let's look at a real photo interrupter. Uh, let, I'll show you a, a close-up of that. All right, this is a device uh, known as a photo interrupter. Uh, it has uh, a emitter on one side and a detector on the other. In fact, they're even marked E and uh, E and D detector emitter. And uh, they're basically a photodiode on one side and a photo, uh, I mean, a LED on the other side. Um, generally, they're a phototransistor. Um, so instead of just a simple diode, it actually is a diode plus plus a uh, plus some gain in a transistor all in one uh, all in one device. Um, if you look at the bottom of this thing, you notice there's actually two two uh, packages that are uh, kind of put in this black holder, and then there's a little slit on both sides to let the light go back and forth. And then the way that you use these things is you you come in and you interrupt the beam and uh, break break the light path. Um, so if you rip apart one of these things, you'll find uh, you'll find these little guys in there. Uh, you'll find the detector and the emitter. Um, and so it looks very much like a uh, uh, you know standard devices. It's just just put into a package. Okay, so what's in the photo interrupter? Uh, on uh, on one side there is a photodiode, uh, plus and minus, and light goes out. And on the other side is a photodiode, and it actually is wired into a phototransistor. Like this. Um, let's see. I don't think it's actually wired that way, is it? Um, no, I think it is. So this is all in the package. So to use these devices, you have to put a pull-up resistor and ground, and then uh, if the uh, photons can go to the other side, it turns this LED on, it'll be grounded, and if you block it, then it will go high. So let's wire that up, try that out. Uh, we also need to add the, uh, we need to add a, a, a resistor on this side and ground on this side. So we need two resistors. So this is something, you know, something like a 220 ohm, and this is something like a 10K. Um, and these will both be going to, to both be going to five volts. All right. Uh, so we have the photo interrupter uh, here, and we have uh, a 220 ohm resistor uh, and ground on the emitter side, and then on the uh, detector side we have ground and a 10k pull-up. We'll monitor the voltage on that pin. So we have uh, 0.2 volts, and uh, that's because the uh, beam of electron, uh, beam of photons, is going across. It's uh, turning on the photodiode. It's adding enough current to the base of the transistor to turn it on, and the base is then pulling uh, this voltage down to ground. If we block the light, uh, then the pull-up resistor allows the uh, voltage uh, to come up to uh, 4.38 volts here. Um, so, that's the basics of a photo interrupter. Now imagine that uh, uh, these two devices are very far apart, and there's a piece of glass in between, a fiber optic. And that's the way it works. And then we uh, modulate the uh, brightness of the LED, and then the output uh, modulates. Um, so that's how fiber optics works. Um, this is also the way that a photo um, uh, optocoupler works. Uh, this is all put into one package, like this is, but it's a very small package, and the uh, the, the um, 
Let, let me draw a picture of it. So, so when that's inside the package, we have a, a plastic package, and we have uh, metal uh, leads coming out. Um, these are our uh, lead frame. Uh, they come into the vise, and you'll have a chip mounted onto uh, of a chip mounted onto one of these, and then the other lead frame will be bent, and there'll be a uh, LED mounted on that lead frame, and uh, you know these are these are multiple pins, right? So. Um, Yeah, sorry about my artwork. So um, the light goes between these two, and there's a path, a leakage path between these. That's very um, sensitive, right? You you want to make this thing be able to withstand, say, a thousand volts or something like that. Well, they can put in a sheet of mylar in here or polyamide or something, um, and then they fill this thing with a clear. Uh, clear epoxy, a clear goo. So between the point between, there's like a little, a little space inside this black package that has this clear glue in the middle of it. Um, and uh, that's the optocoupler's work. As there's just a photodiode and a phototransistor. Uh, you can buy these things that might have one or or four or eight uh, devices inside one package, and they may have more than more than more than two, uh, four, four leads, they may have more than that. But uh, yeah, uh, these all to go into, uh, into one little package. All right, so we've seen a um, uh, photo interrupter. We can also make a photo reflective uh, uh, sensor. We can start with an LED and it outputs light forward. And then we can have a, uh, a photo detector and if it inter intersects something uh, reflective, the light will reflect down to the uh, photodiode, and then we'll see this thing. Um, so uh, we can um, make devices that can detect whether something is present or not, or whether something is reflective or not. Um, I worked in uh, building barcode equipment uh, early in my career and barcode tags are just um, black lines on a white piece of paper and then you use a uh, reflective sensor that has a nice spot, a nice focus spot and as that spot moves across, as you scan that spot across, uh, it will see um, it will see the reflectance, either high or low. And then uh, the width of these lines. So in this particular case, we have narrows and we have wides, and then we have another narrow. The narrows we can say are zeros, and the wides we can say are ones. So this would encode 000110. Zero, 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 zero. Um, and that's what's known as code 39. Um, there are many other types of barcodes, um, but this is one of the simplest ones, just wides and narrows. Um, they can either be white or black. And there's always a transition. It's always white, black, white, black, white, black. It's just whether they're narrow or wide or narrow or wide. Um, so uh, let's take a look at uh, maybe the sensor uh, of of uh, something like this. Um, the ones that we had built had a uh, uh, an LED and a photodiode mounted in the same package and there was a little wall between them so they couldn't uh, shine light across to either one. And then on top there was actually a little lens and over here there was a little lens and the lenses were mounted at an angle. Okay. So light from this uh, device focused out here, 
and light from this device focused over here. And so uh, this lens was actually molded as one piece of plastic and it's called a bifolar, uh, bifolar lens or bifurcated lens. Um, but it had, uh, it had two lenslets. Uh, they were slightly tilted and they focused their spot of light here. Um, you can imagine if you have a, uh, a cone of uh, light uh, that focuses to a spot, it will focus and then it will get bigger again. And then if you have uh, the detection, um, maybe the detector is uh, focused, uh, let's say, over here. And then it travels out into space. Okay, Then there's only one spot where both of them intersect. So the light can only reach that point. It can only be seen by that point. So if you're here, then uh, it's kind of blind. And, it, and if you're out here, it's kind of blind, right? You need to be you need to be with in these two cones. Uh, you could elect to build a system. Oops, I'm sorry, I was off page there. So there's these two cones of of light, and you had to. Um, uh, so if you think about this system, you have a focus, uh, a focused beam of light. Okay. This is where the light is. And then you have a, a focused area that's collecting the light. And they only intersect at this one point. So if, you're, if your piece of paper is here, then the light doesn't make it to the, to the detector or, or out here. So there's, there's a very narrow range where this thing can actually see things. So you have to be focused very accurately. You could imagine that you had a uh, uh, system where you focused the light here and you had a collection system where you um, maybe collected the light here and now there's an area where the two overlap so now we have a working distance it will work between these two distances it, there's still an area here where it can output light and see light, so you can you can cross these two beams and create an area, and create a working distance. It doesn't work beyond that. It doesn't work in front of that. But you create a working distance by having these emitter detector systems.